welcome. Welcome to the Late Show. Great to be here. Well, you, you have a new were... job since the last time I saw you. What did you say? You have a new job since the last time. Oh I yeah, saw you. we were over on the Colbert Report yeah. back in the day. That was fun. Yeah, yeah. remember yeah. that? This is uh, they they remember your appearance fondly, evidently. <laughs> Now, okay, so you were a director of Russian and Eurasian Affairs at the National Security Council. Yeah. You were the ambassador to Russia uh, from 2012 uh, to 2014. Correct. And um, maybe you could... Um, you were in Helsinki for the summit. I was, Okay. Yes. What did you make of it generally? <laughs> Let's start general and get specific. Uh, I was a former diplomat, but uh, it was a disaster. And I that's, mean, there's just that's a no, diplomatic. Yeah, I mean, I can't. Now, what is? I had my own. Yeah. I had my own reaction to yeah. it, an uninformed uh, but American citizen reaction to yes. the president siding with a hostile foreign leader as opposed to our intelligence services right. about defending yeah, the bedrock of our democracy. But uh, what did you see? What What did you expect? What was the, What was the best that could have happened? Well, well, so my expectations were very low. Let's be clear about that. I mean, I mean, just, and sure. by the way, I think the entire Trump administration's expectations were very low. These guys had not met at a summit. I, I, my understanding is that most members of his uh, administration said, just don't do this. I, from what I understand, that's true. But the, the message that they had for him going into the meeting was to be tough, to push back. And, and remember, I'm not against summits with dictators. I'm not against meetings with adversaries. Uh, but when you have them, as we did during the Cold War, by the way, with Soviet leaders, the, your job is to advance American national interest. It's not to get along and be friendly with a guy like Vladimir Putin. Now, let me it's... play the devil's advocate here for a second. <laughs> Donald Trump said... Donald Trump said that guys like you and the people who criticize him want us to go to war. They'd like to see us to get into some sort yeah. of shooting match with Russia. Five years with Barack Obama, I want to go to war? Give me a break. I mean, well, come that, Trump that, that is saying he brings us peace in our time. Well, let's just be clear. There's no threat of war with Russia right now. Uh, but there is a threat of Russia intervening in our elections, as they did in 2016, which our president won't admit to. There is a threat of them threatening their neighbors. They annex Crimea and Ukraine. They uh, are threatening other countries there. And when you're threatening, when you're being belligerent abroad, you need to push back. It's, it's, a, it's one word. It's called containment. And I say we have to go back to containment, not because I'm some cold warrior that dreams of going back to that era, uh, but because it's necessary to push back on Vladimir Putin. And tragically, unfortunately, that's not what President Trump did in Helsinki. No, the, the latest we found out is that uh, the, the, the Putin regime has, uh, in 2017, penetrated our electrical grid and some of our communications networks and could shut them down, or, or theoretically could shut them down. We don't know exactly, yeah. or it hasn't been revealed to the public. My understanding is that the Obama administration, and as the ambassador, you may not know this, uh, that they had penetrated Russia's electrical grid and their communication systems, and they had a plan in place to pull the trigger and shut them down. Have you read about that? Did you read about that in the paper? <laughs> I'm not asking you, I, not, not in a classified. Uh, yeah. I read it about it in, my okay. source was the New York Times. Oh, is that right? Okay. Have you read that paper? Well, I, I shouldn't comment about that. You shouldn't comment, things. but you yeah. heard about that. I, I yes know or the no, New York you heard, Times. You, I've, you heard I've, that, I've, that rumor. Let's just, let's just put it this way. The Russians have tremendous cyber capabilities. So do we. Okay. Um, uh, we want to know the truth of what happened in the election, and the Russians want to know their own truths. Donald Trump described something as an incredible offer, where Putin would allow Mueller's team to go over there and witness the Russians interrogating their own yes. 12 members of the GRU who had hacked right. our election. In return, they would get to interrogate some Americans. One of them was you. Yes. When did you find out? <laughs> And what was your reaction when you found out you were on that exclusive little list? So I was in Helsinki, like you said, working for another network. Uh, I apologize for that. Um, uh, and I was watching it live. And remember, everybody was focused on the cr crazy thing that Trump said. I'm not going to, uh, you know, Putin was strong in saying he didn't do it. Yeah. And that was the news. But I was listening to the whole thing. And when Putin floated that little scheme, it sounded crazy to me, right? Because... Uh, he was suggesting that American intelligence officers help this British businessman, Bill Browder, to launder money out of Russia and then help the Clinton campaign. That's what he said. To everybody, by the way, most people weren't listening to that part. I wasn't. I said, this is absolutely crazy. 
uh, idea. And by the way, the notion that we're going to go interview their intelligence officers, mm -hmm. they're going to lie to our people just like Vladimir Putin st stood next to our president and lied in Helsinki. So that was an empty offer. Uh, Unfortunately, our president said, well, that's a great idea. What a generous offer from President Putin. It was generous. It was generous. But I didn't know that I was a part of it until <laughs> I did it. He said, I'm not an American intelligence officer. It was only when I'm flying back on the plane uh, from Helsinki, uh, I had Wi-Fi, and Russian journalists started to ping me. I have lots of Russian friends, and they said, do you know that you're being considered as a criminal, as a conspirator with this guy, Bill Browder, to, to launder money out. And so that's when, that was the first time so I heard So that's that. what they want to talk to you about, is they yes. say you helped him launder the money. Allegedly. And let's be clear, I did not do that. Nobody did that. <laughs> Allegedly. Let's, not, let's Allegedly. be a little stronger. Allegedly. This is crazy. Okay. This is crazy stuff that Putin was talking about. So, uh, uh, you know, uh, wanting to interrogate our diplomats, the president saying, yeah, that's not a bad idea. Uh, hacking the electoral grid, grid uh, uh, hacking the election. Are we in a new Cold War? Because your book is From Cold War to, from Cold War to Hot Peace. Are, are, are we on our way to a hot peace, or are we in the hot peace right now? Because I remember the Cold War. We're in the hot peace. Um, uh, and I use that word deliberately to echo that it's like the Cold War and that it's confrontational. Uh, but some things are different, and some are, some are better and some are worse. So we are not on the verge of a nuclear war with Russia like we were in the 1960s, and everybody should relax. We're not doing that. But there are aspects of where we're at today that are different. So even during the height of the Cold War, the Russians didn't hack our elections, didn't steal emails and publish them to help one candidate or another. Even during the Cold War, they didn't annex territory. I mean, think about that. We fought World War II because a country started annexing territory. Now we're back to that. So I don't think it's such a great... It's different than the Cold War, but to say it's better or worse, I'm not so sure. Hey, Noam, it's a change of pace. Change of pace. <laughs> Well, the book is From Cold War to Hot Peace. It's available now. Ambassador Michael McFall, everybody. <laughs>